Welcome to the Hopcast. Oh, let's get sour, everybody. <laughs> I'm Brad from Whiskey. My name's Ken Hunnameter. With us again. Once again, Greer Davis, everybody. Hi. Thanks for uh, us. Thank you for having me. Greer loves sour beers. If it tastes like vinegar, <laughs> I will drink it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we thought who better to have on an episode of uh, Hopcast where we're going to do Lost Abbey Red Poppy and Cigar City. Vujade. Ah, cigar was, back that was hard for me to say. I told you guys, <laughs> come back. That should be deja vu. Right. <laughs> come back for the next episode. We were doing Cigar City. I hope you listen. So these are, um, I, I know I've, I've had Red Poppy before. Uh, never had Vujade. This was sent to, to us once again from our good buddy John Hunt out in Florida. So shut up! Uh, and the Red Poppy was given to me by the owner of Tony Starts Away, which is a really great uh craft beer bar in, in Los Angeles. Uh, it's actually in Burbank. Yeah. So shout, shout out, out to Tony. Shut up. Yeah, that was that was a great bar. We were there. Yeah. Meeting up with people when we were out there. It was a good time. So yeah, let's let's go ahead and uh, and do this Lost Abbey Red Poppy. Uh, I know it's delicious already. So should be enjoyable. <laughs> Well, that pretty much foamed over. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> kind of an excitable beer, uh, <laughs> but you, you find that a lot with uh, some of these bottle di- bottle conditioned beers. You know, just uh, depending on how you store them and, and all that, mm-hmm. uh, the the uh, the bottle fermentation can get a little crazy on you, especially some of these sour beers too. So. Is this a little cloudy? Is that an unfiltered, or is it just I it's think so dark? I'm I'm seeing some you know little bits yeast? of uh, sediment. Yeah. It's probably yeast. Uh, so I, I'm guessing yeah. that this is unfiltered. Yeah. But um, it's certainly bottle conditions, so you're getting a little bit of that. And it definitely, it smells sour. Mm-hmm. It has a nice, like, it's got a little bit of, like, ruby red mm-hmm. hue in there, but it's pretty brown. Pretty yeah. yeah. Uh, so this beer is, is aged with uh, cherries in oak barrels, and that's how they kind of allow it to sour up and, and uh, get some of its character. So. Mm, cheers. Oh yeah, mm. nice amount of carbonation. Yeah. You get that cherry, definitely like tart cherry. You know, this ain't no maraschino bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Real it's cherry. a it's a really nice. It's definitely sour, but it's not. It, it might be a good introductory sour to somebody who hasn't had that before. It could yeah. be. I mean, it's it's, I mean, it's uh, sour. It's sure sour. It's tough for me to tell at this point because yeah. my palate has kind of adjusted to these beers, and mm-hmm. I really really enjoy them. Like way back in the day, I'd be like I might you know just be like oh my god this is insanely sour i can't drink it um but so it's 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 all subjective you know and it's all yeah. a matter of your own palate right. to me this is it's got a, a nice amount of this, sour but it's not overwhelmingly so this reminds me a little bit of duchess mm-hmm. um oh which um was my first sour i ever tried excellent beer so um and it's one that's at a lot of bars so if i'm like i need a sour beer a duchess. lot of the time you'll have a duchess and very similar, but um, I, 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 that's why I think it would be a good one to start with because it's, it's definitely that genre, but not it's not quite vinegar. Yeah, because uh, I, I think you're you're right on with that because the Duchess is is, is a Flanders red, mm-hmm. and so this is kind of has that same uh, characteristic as a Flanders red with the color and just like the the overall flavor in general kind of tastes more more like a Flanders red than um, more some other sours, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, if any of you have been watching the Hopcast for a while now, you saw my progression of sour beers. Yeah, like, right. So what, it's been maybe a year now, and I'm finally like, that doesn't just taste sour. Like, I can taste the cherries mm-hmm. and get other flavors out of it, so. Yeah. It can certainly be an acquired uh, taste for people, you know, and, and Brad was a perfect example of that. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, maybe maybe you didn't like it straight out, out of the chute, and, uh, but, I, I would keep at it. I think there's there's so much complexity in some of these beers, especially the fact that they can make them at such uh, at times a, a low alcohol percentage, and the amount of flavor intensity that you can get from them is just insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what's the alcohol on this? I'm not sure. This one. Does it say on there? Five. So no, five it's not bad. Pretty low. Uh, and 
I'm drinking it and I almost wanna like I don't really like chocolate but I wanna have like a chocolate with it I taste cherry chocolate mm -hmm. cherry covered chocolates in my head mm -hmm. like yeah. there's something about it oh, they, they can be I fantastic. definitely there's a the definitely characters. cherry note in here mm -hmm. that's very strong it's very good yeah so Tommy Arthur over at Lost Abbey has been doing great with his Belgian style beers and, and a lot of his sours so this is just uh, another one of those that's uh, he really hit out of the park with this one so that's a great beer mm -hmm. and it comes out once a year or is it uh, I think so I believe so yeah I mean these these beers probably ferment for a year so that makes absolute sense you know because mm -hmm. uh, well, that's not the only way you can get a sour is to let it, it sit just takes for a time. while yeah I'm currently making a Flanders red myself and it's been sitting in there for Oh, maybe five months, and it's it's smelling good, and it's tough to keep your hands off of it and not drink it. But yeah. like you know, if, if you wait the full year, then I think you get the the but full impact of it. We've I've been discovering over some time that anything really fermented and sour or that takes a long time, the better it is. So <laughs> that's my that's my theory. Anyway, <laughs> not a bad one, but uh, yeah. The, this is a this is a sour that's uh, low alcohol. Now we're going to move on to one that's slightly different because this is double the amount of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll finish these up and uh, and hit the big boy. Cheers. My mouth is still puckering from the red poppy. Well, yeah, I I, I don't suspect that it's going to subside anytime soon because we're about to uh, pour some of the the bouge day. Uh, from Cigar City, once so again, exciting. thanks to our, our good buddy John in, in, in Florida. Ah. So shout out to John. So did they do a deja vu? And this is... I have no idea. I, this is, this is a, when he sent this, this is the first time ever hearing of this beer. Hmm. But there's quite a lot going on from what I'm reading. This is uh, made with black currants, um, locally foraged lemon leaves, hibiscus, cane sugar, and elderberry flour. So a lot of, a lot of stuff. So awesome. let's do it. That's really dark. It's very dark. Yeah, very much. Um, it's. I mean, you can't even really see through this beer. I wasn't really expecting that. Just see nice head, though. In the reflection. Yeah, beautiful head. Uh, nice and fluffy. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of a dark tan. Mm -hmm. uh, smells uh, not your typical sour. Mm -mm. Kind of has some other things going on. I'm assuming it, it's the foray of other crap that they throw <laughs> they threw right. in there. <laughs> we've uh, we've had beers with elderberries. Uh, I believe we've had a black currant. From mm -hmm. the dog, maybe. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, did they just roast everything? Is that why it's so dark? Yeah, this is the roasted malts, and I'm picking up a little bit on that in the aroma itself. Just yeah. uh, smelling some of that roastiness Roasting. that's mixing with the sour, like acidity. I mean, usually I mean, it definitely smells sour, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Usually when you're, you know, getting an aroma off a sour beer, it's it's either fruit like a cherry or just the sourness in general. Or a barrel, uh, but I'm actually picking up some roastiness on this one. So, well, let's give it a taste. Let's, let's drink. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, yeah. There's a lot going on in this one. That is actually really roasty. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's got it. There. It's almost like the acidity and the roast are they're they're like kind of fighting each other yeah on which which one's more prominent they're kind of, they're definitely on level playing fields mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's almost more juice than like sour or bitter like i'm what getting a juice like a juice like a juice carton like i guess like maybe fresh squeezed juice. yeah maybe that's the berry elderberry yeah yeah i think it's it's certainly sour, but it's it's almost masked by the roast, the fruit, a little bit of caramel, lemon. I get a little bit of lemon. Yeah, there's the what was it lemon lemon leaves or something okay. uh, that they have in there, and <clears throat> I think that uh, this beer kind of it just. You know, there's so there's so much going on, and they sure. they kind of pass back and forth of what's going, you know, because you're, it's, it's hitting on different parts of your mouth and you're getting certain different things. Yeah. It's a, it's pretty complex. It's one of those things, beer. this is one of those things you have to sit down and kind of think about it. Mm -hmm. Like you, I don't think this would be pair very well with food at all. I'm sure you could do something. 
something, uh, but I, I almost like it kind it of on tough, its own. Yeah. It would be a dessert. It's it's super sweet. Like it is real sticky sweet. Sticky and like mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of sugar in here. Yeah, and I'm. The perception to me is that this is less um, acidic and, and sour than the red poppy. Right. But I'm not sure if that's just uh, some of that roast that you're mentioning is mm -hmm. kind of masking some of that. Yeah. Or if you know that's just my perception mm -hmm. on the tongue. But I think that this yeah. is slightly less tart. Slightly less tart, but very delicious. Oh, it's it's great. Very yeah. good. That's good. Is there too much in it that it's just like a kitchen sink of? You know, I didn't stuff? get that. It wasn't. It's not muddy to me. It's still. It's still good. It's it's. It's got a clarity to it. I was worried about that, you know. When you read just reading the, the list of oh my god, there's so much stuff, you know. So you, you get worried that it's just going to be kind of like a mess. But I think it it kind of speaks well. Yeah. It's it's weird to see this from Scar City because they have the the IPA kind of series and mm -hmm. cedar series, and now they're getting the sours. Yeah, I didn't know that they were doing any sour, so this is uh, quite a delight. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that they've uh, decided to check it out. I, I enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very Purely excited. For selfish reasons. I'm, yeah. I'm very excited to go to Florida and being able to actually go to the brewery and have samples of everything. I'm, I'm very excited about that. Yeah, just got to watch out. This guy's at 10%. So, right, I'm worried that the sours, I've, I've been liking them more, they're like at 5 4%. Yeah. And then you're gonna get these imperial sours. <laughs> <laughs> then you're passed out. <laughs> oh, we'll tune in. But <laughs> 15 minutes, 20 minutes. We've been uh, hitting it pretty hard tonight, but uh, it's been a good night. We've had some delicious beers. Yeah. And um, very delicious. I want to thank, say thanks to, uh, once again to to John and Tony yeah, for you. for the beers tonight. So shout out to you guys. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Cheers. Thank you for watching the podcast. Cheers.